Okay guys, there's a challenge on the internet where people give their toddlers treats and they walk out of the room and they tell the kids, and, and Ella, pay attention, that they can't have the treat until they come back. So I'm gonna try it on you guys. So here's two spoonfuls of peanut butter, but you cannot eat it till I come back. Okay, sit up, Kronkles. All right, here's the, no, this is not your peanut butter. No, Kronk, it's not your peanut butter yet. It's not your peanut, no, 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 no. It's not your peanut, Ella, this is not your, no, 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 no. It's not your peanut butter yet. Okay, ready? Wait, I'll be right back, Kronk. Hey, you're gonna fail this challenge, I just know it. Okay, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. I'll be back. I'm back. Kronk, excuse me. You failed. Good thing you're cute, pal. Here you go. Hey everybody, it's Molly with All Ears and I am back with a brand new video coming to you once again from my office. Today's topic, mistakes people make in Disney's Hollywood Studios and how you can avoid them. We did these videos in Magic Kingdom and Epcot. You guys have asked us to keep going with them. So today we're gonna to be talking about some uh-ohs people do in Hollywood Studios and how you can make sure to still have the best day ever. not know how boarding groups work. If you're unfamiliar, Disney's latest attraction, Rise of the Resistance in Galaxy's Edge, can only be accessed by a virtual queue in which you get a boarding group for, and that's the only way you can get on it. There's no fast pass, there's no single rider, there's no standby, this is the only way that you can ride Disney's latest and greatest attraction. But a lot of people don't even know how to get a boarding group or there's common mistakes that come with getting a boarding group. So first things first, everybody has to have a boarding pass to get on Rise of the Resistance. You can't, ha um, and everyone has to be in the park to get said boarding group. You can't have one person go in while everybody else sleeps in at the hotel and get a boarding group for everybody in your party. That's not how it works. If you wanna ride it, you need to be in the park getting your own boarding group. You can't, however, make the boarding group for other people. Um, as long as you're connected in My Disney Experience and can say, make fast passes for someone else, that means you could also make their boarding group. But again, each person that wants to ride, their ticket has to be scanned in or the app literally will not let you do it. Boarding groups come up online as soon as the park officially opens. So let's say Hollywood Studios on the website, they are gonna open at 8 a.m. People are gonna start queuing up outside pretty early, at least by seven, if not earlier, and they'll typically actually open the gates and let you get in around 7.30, so 30-ish minutes before the park opens. But even though you've gotten in the park at 7.35, you still can't actually get a boarding group in the app until eight o'clock. So you wanna make sure you get there early though, so that way your ticket has enough time to sync up with the system so that it can register that you've been inside the park. Um, but yeah, you have to be in the park at the time it opens to get a boarding group. And these things literally go in like two minutes. So that's very important if you wanna ride Rise of the Resistance. Uh, a couple tips to getting a boarding group, try not to use Disney Wi-Fi if you're able to, uh, because everybody else is using Disney Wi-Fi. Make sure you're listening up for the announcement because they'll tell you when the park's open. Try to get a boarding group right when you hear that announcement. Um, but you can actually see me go to the park, get boarding groups on a couple different occasions in the Best Day Ever Hollywood Studios video, as well as the Galaxy's Edge Easter Egg Hunt video. I actually go to the park, you can see screenshots from the app, and that'll walk you through it step by step how to do it not looking for same day reservations. This is actually very good information at any park or resort, but it's particularly pertinent at Hollywood Studios because they have a lot of things that aren't just dining that need reservations. So you can you also are heavily advised to have a reservation for Droid Depot where you can build a droid or um, Savvy's Workshop, which is where you build a lightsaber in Galaxy's Edge. Savvy's is usually only reservations, um, as well as Oka's Cantina, which is the bar inside Galaxy's Edge. They're usually on a reservations only thing. So so um, all three of those things you can book in advance 180 days as well as all the dining, sit down dining at Hollywood Studios. But a lot of people think if that when they're looking at it a couple months out, if there's no reservations available, then gosh darn it, now you don't get to do that activity or eat at that restaurant. But there's a cancellation policy that if you don't cancel something within 24 hours for dining, it's a $10 per person fee that's charged to the card on file. And then at the Savvy's Enjoy Depot, there are other requirements. But if you 
long story short, if you don't cancel on time, you're gonna get charged money. So people that change their plans last minute, cancel last minute. They cancel right around that 24 hour mark, maybe the 36 hour mark. So people think, uh, they don't think to look for same day reservations. So when you're in the park, if you wanted to do Joy Depot, if you wanted to go to Oga's, make sure you're looking at the app, refreshing Fiddle Faddle in the app, and you may have one pop up on that day. And then you could build a lightsaber or drink a fuzzy tauntaun in Oga's Cantina. Booking the wrong fast passes. Now this is something that you really need to think about at Hollywood Studios because there's a lot of great attractions. So which ones do you book the fast passes for? Currently as it stands, Hollywood Studios is a tiered fast pass park. And in tier one, you've got Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, you've got Slinky Dog Dash, and you've got Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. In tier two, you've got some other big attractions. You've got Tower of Terror, you've got Rock and Roller Coaster, Toy Story Mania, Fantasmic, Alien Swirling Saucers, Beauty and the Beast Live on Stage, Frozen, for the first time in forever, a Frozen sing-along show. Did I say Voyage of the Little Mermaid? Disney Junior Dance Party, Indiana Jones Epic Sun Spectacular, Star Tours, Muppet Vision. I think I got them all. I recommend only booking rides when you're booking Fast Passes at Hollywood Studios. In tier one, for me personally, I would not book Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run because they offer single rider. So you know you can ride that, usually without a long wait. So I would book Slinky Dog Dash or Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. At some point, I will do a redo of the Fast Pass Challenge in Hollywood Studios so I can really figure out which of those two is the better choice, which one pops up more on the app later. But for now, I'd pick Slinky Dog or Mickey and Minnie's. Pick that for tier one. In tier two, I would pick Tower of Terror and Toy Story Midway Mania. I'm not gonna pick Star Tours because it usually doesn't have that long of a standby line. I'm not gonna pick Alien Swirling Saucers because it's Alien Swirling Saucers. It's a fine attraction. It's just not worth your fast pass when you could book something like Toy Story Mania, which is a really awesome attraction. Um, and I'm not probably gonna book Rock and Roller Coaster. I advise you to book Rock and Roller Coaster because again, there's a single rider. The single rider line at both Millennium Falcon Rock and Roller Coaster puts you in a different line and you're just filling in odd seats. So even though you're gonna be split up from your party, you may not get the position you want on Millennium Falcon. You still get to ride. So if your goal is to ride a bunch of stuff, there you go. And the reason I'm not gonna book shows is because unless it's super, super busy, you can usually get a seat at most shows 15 to 20-ish minutes before the show starts. So you don't wanna waste a fast pass on a line at Tower of Terror that's gonna be 90 minutes long on Beauty and the Beast that you could just walk into Beauty and the Beast. Now, as always, don't forget, once you've used your initial three fast passes, you can get more one at a time out of tier one or tier two. So at that point, if you wanna get Voyage of the Little Mermaid, go for it. Or maybe at that point, another ride you haven't done will pop up. But you wanna be smart when you're booking those fast passes and especially consider booking Fantasmic later in the day, because if you book it as one of your initial three, then you're locked into that fast pass at like eight o'clock at night and you're never gonna to get to use more than three. Going standby to Fantasmic. If you're unfamiliar, Fantasmic is one of Hollywood Studios nighttime spectaculars. It's incredible. One of my favorite things in Disney World. It's a triumphant 25 minute show about good versus evil. There's princesses, there's villains, there's fireworks, there's water projections, there's Mickey on top of a mountain. Some imagination, huh? I'm gonna cry just thinking about it. But anyway, you should see Fantasmic, but I don't recommend going in the standby queue. For one, it's incredibly popular. And even though the amphitheater seats like 10,000 people, people start lining up at least an hour early, if not more. You don't wanna wait that long just to see the show. You can get a fast pass for it. Like I said, don't get it as an initial fast pass, but get it later in the day. Fast pass doesn't guarantee you a good seat, but it guarantees you a seat as long as you show up in that fast pass window. So that's a great way to see it. There's also a dining plan that you can do where you go eat at a couple restaurants on the plan and then you get a voucher to go sit in a reserve section. So you could always do that. Some of those uh, packages are a part of the dining plan. Um, so that's a great way to see it. Uh, there's also a dessert party offered sometimes where you'll go into Fantasmic Amphitheater early, you'll get some desserts, you'll get some snacks, you'll get some cocktails, and then you sit in a reserve section again. So while both two of them are add-ons that are gonna cost a little more money, getting a fast pass is free so make sure you've got yourself a reserve seat for Fantasmic when you go. Missing the other nighttime shows. So there are multiple nighttime shows at Hollywood Studios and unfortunately you can't usually see them all because Disney schedules them right around the same time. So it would be very hard, if not impossible, to get from one to the other in time. And if you can only see one, yeah, I'm gonna recommend you see Fantasmic. <laughs> 
But if you can go to Hollywood Studios on more than one night or you've been a bunch of times before, then you should definitely check out one of the other options. Actually, you could see both the other options in one foul swoop. You've got the wonderful world of animation, which is a projection show that debuted last year for Hollywood Studios 30th anniversary. It's a projection show on the Chinese theater and the surrounding buildings celebrating Mickey's 90 years of animation. And there's a clip in there from every single full length animated Disney feature film and Pixar feature film. So it's really, really cool. I love the projection shows. Got really fun music. That one's great. After that one, they do the Star Wars A Galactic Spectacular, which is a fireworks and laser and projection show all about Star Wars. You guessed it. Uh, but they project clips from every single Star Wars movie, including ones like Solo uh, and Rogue One. They've got some really cool effects. They've got fireworks, they've got lasers, obviously an amazing soundtrack. So um, if you've seen Fantasmic a bunch of times, I recommend checking out the other ones. And especially if you're a Star Wars fan, you're not gonna wanna miss those fireworks. Going the wrong way first thing in the morning. So because everybody gets to Hollywood Studios early to get a boarding group now, there's not really a rope drop at Hollywood Studios because um, everybody's already in the park when it opens. But most people still go to Toy Story Land to get on Slinky Dog Dash. So Slinky Dog Dash starts the day with like a two hour line and it will drop a little bit later in the day. So a lot of people go straight to uh, Toy Story Land. I'd say the second most popular place to go is um, Galaxy's Edge to get on Millennium Falcon. but. In my experience, not a lot of people went down Sunset Boulevard, so I would go there and knock out Tower of Terror and rock and roller coaster first thing in the morning. Also, possibly more important than what attraction you're gonna go do first, where are you gonna get coffee? Everybody goes to the Trolley Car Cafe, which is the Starbucks right there when you first enter the park, and it's like a really crazy long line. If you're like me and can't wait that long for coffee, I highly recommend finding one of the Joffrey's carts around the park. There's one on your way to Toy Story Land, there's one over by Tower of Terror, or if you're really desperate, there's carts around the park that just sell plain black coffee for like $3. I drink it often. When it comes to quick and not full service restaurant options at Hollywood Studios, it's probably the worst park when it comes to that kind of food. Um, that's very telling. When I did the best day ever at Hollywood Studios, which is when I did all the best things based on our reader rankings, the best quick service restaurants mentioned were Starbucks and the ice cream shop. So that should say everything. But just because none of the quick service restaurants are like super standouts, like some at Epcot or Animal Kingdom, uh, there are still some really good things that you can eat in Hollywood Studios without a full service reservation. For one, my favorite quick service is a walk-up stand in Galaxy's Edge. It's called Ronto Roasters. They feature the Ronto Wrap, which is a grilled sausage. It's got a peppercorn dressing. It's in a grilled like pita wrap. It is so good. They have a breakfast version as well. Delicious. That is on the dining plan as well. Mm. That's so good. You've got Baseline Tap House, which is um, a brewery tap house where you can get some different beers, but they've got a giant pretzel and a charcuterie board. Not ashamed to admit I've eaten a charcuterie board as a meal before. You could also go to the Brown Derby Lounge, which is connected to the Brown Derby. You can order off their full menu or you can get some tapas out there without a reservation. Same thing with the Tune In Lounge. It's connected to the 50s Primetime Cafe. So if you can't get a reservation at 50s or you don't wanna eat a, a long meal, you can just walk up to the bar, full bar, and then you can order off the menu there as well. So there are some hidden gems and Hollywood Studios as far as eating goes, um, but just a lot of people don't know about it. Meeting characters. A lot of people don't realize that there's some really cool characters you can meet in Hollywood Studios that you can't meet anywhere else. For starters, Olaf, the snowman. Can't meet him anywhere else. I'm sure you want to give him a warm hug. You can also meet a bunch of the Star Wars characters. In the Star Wars launch bay, you're going to have Darth Vader. He's really fun to meet and also scary. Chewbacca, as well as BB-8. And then over in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, you may catch a glimpse of a Stormtrooper, Kylo Ren, Chewbacca may head over there sometimes, as well as Rey. Just keep in mind, these aren't like standard meet and greets where they're going to stop and form a queue. They're going to be moving and grooving. They're chilling out in Batu, but they may come up to you, ask a question, pose for a selfie, that kind of thing. Uh, and then over in Toy Story Land, you can meet Buzz, who I adore, but you can also meet Buzz in Magic Kingdom. But you can't meet Woody, Jesse, or Bo Peep anywhere else, uh, as well as the Green Army Men there in Toy Story Land. So lots of fun characters in Hollywood Studios people don't think about. Also Sully from Monsters, Inc. Wow, just thought about him. Give him a big blue furry hug. And last, but certainly not least, a lot of people think of Hollywood Studios and they go to all those big named attractions like we've been talking about, Tower of Terror, Rock and Roller Coaster, Rise of the Resistance, Slinky Dog Dash, Toy Story Mania. There are so many great rides. But don't forget the underrated great shows that you can also see at Hollywood Studios. For starters, you've got the Streetmosphere, the Citizens of Hollywood. 
They are a delight. They come out in the mornings and early afternoons. These are people that live in the Hollywood land that you're in and they perform little skits. They do audience participation. Sometimes there's two of them that just literally sit on in chairs on the street and they're reading the paper, but whatever they're reading, the headline is about people walking down the street and they just like make fun of you and it's really delightful, it's very fun. Um, they also do like dating show games and they'll ask you questions. They're a hoot, don't miss out on them. In Toy Story Land, you've got the Green Army Men will come and they will do drills because they are they're grilling soldiers. So you could be a part of that. That's really fun. Muppet Vision 3D, a 3D show with the Muppets. Shocking, I know, but it's really adorable, really cute. Doesn't usually have a long line. That's a great show that I highly recommend. Um, Frozen is really fun and it's funny as an adult as well because the narrators who are telling the story of Frozen pepper in a little adult humor. They kind of ad lib things sometimes. So I always get a kick out of them. Uh, Voyage of the Little Mermaid usually doesn't have that long of a line and it's a puppet show as well as live actors telling the story of the Little Mermaid. There's a giant Ursula so beware. Um, Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular that's another of my favorite shows and it is really the last thing of like the old Hollywood studios. It's the thing that shows you behind the scenes how they do some of the stunts in action films like Indiana Jones. Beauty and the Beast live on stage. That's another great stage show. That one's not so much underrated. A lot of people enjoy that one, but that really is a lovely retelling of Beauty and the Beast at Hollywood Studios. I covered a few more of these in a video I did uh, just before the parks closed about things to do in Hollywood Studios without waiting in a line. So we'll link that for you. But yeah, don't forget amongst all these great attractions at Hollywood Studios that there's some really good entertainment as well. Well, that is a wrap on mistakes people make in Hollywood Studios and how you can be sure to avoid them. What's your favorite thing to do in Hollywood Studios? Let us know in the comments. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe to our channel, follow us on Instagram at AllEarsNet, and until next time, y'all, I'm Molly, and it's been magical. Want to see more of my videos? Click over here. Want to subscribe? You can do that right here. And also, ring that notification bell to make sure you get instantly notified anytime we post a new video. Thanks for following. See you real soon.